amazing artists so welcome back to our color wheel project this project is all about color and we learned how to mix different colors um, on week one of our project when we colored in our umbrella as you can see our picture is starting to come together we have our color wheel umbrella at the top and last week we drew the raincoat and the rain boots for the person holding our umbrella and then of course we colored it in we did all of this using oil pastel it's important that the last couple of weeks we used oil pastels you could have used crayons too if you don't have oil pastels but something like that that's more of a crayon texture waxy um, these are a little bit more oily and softer than crayons but they work the same for the technique that we're going to do today which is a resist painting we are going to make a resist painting by using a white oil pastel and you'll see in a minute we're gonna draw different shapes and lines with our oil pastel and we're going to use a white one because it'll show up really nicely when we paint paint on top of it, okay? So like I said, this is a resist painting because the oil or the waxy part of this oil pastel is going to resist the paint. It's going to push the paint away so you'll still be able to see what's underneath the paint. And you'll see what that looks like in just a minute. Now, if you don't have oil pastels or paint, then you guys can just color your background however you want to. Just keep in mind that this is supposed to be a rainy day, so you should have rain. Um, we're actually gonna draw some puddles down here at the bottom, um, but you could use crayons, you could use markers, colored pencils, anything you have to color your background. We just don't wanna have all this white space in the back. Right now, it just looks like a person floating in the air holding an umbrella, so we need to make a ground, we need to do the sky in the back, and we're gonna do that with a resist painting. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So since it's a rainy day, I have blue um, liquid watercolor paint and I just put some water in it to kind of water it down a little bit um, because it was a little bit too thick and you can do that if you're using liquid watercolors and of course I have a paintbrush. This is a big piece of paper so I'm going to use a bigger paintbrush so it will cover more space when I'm painting. But we're not painting yet. The first thing that we have to do is take our white oil pastel and we are going to start towards the bottom of our picture. Because right now, like I said a second ago, it looks like our person here is just floating in the air. So what we wanna do is we wanna draw puddles down here at the bottom. The puddles are gonna represent our ground. And I'm gonna do puddles by doing a spiral line. It's very hard for you to see because I'm using white oil pastel on a white piece of paper. So I'm actually going to flip it over and I'm gonna show you what I'm drawing in pencil. So pretend like I'm using my white oil pastel. A spiral line starts with a dot in the center and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger like that, okay? I'm not making mine very circular like this. I'm kind of making my spirals a little bit more oval shaped. So it's still starting in the center and it's still getting bigger, but I'm trying to make an oval shape more than a circle shape. See, if I did a spiral in a circle shape, it's more rounded, but the oval one, it kind of looks like a squished circle. So you can practice both of those today. Uh, maybe you want to practice on the back of your paper like Miss M is doing with pencil first before you get started with your oil pastel. To start a spiral, you just start with a dot and then you start curling it around and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. We don't want to make giant spirals because we want to have a bunch of puddles on the ground here. Okay, so my spirals are about three fingers wide, so you can measure yours too, but I'm gonna draw a bunch of these on the ground closer to where my rain boots are because our feet are stationed on the ground, right? So we wanna do most of our puddles on the ground. While you're drawing your spirals on the ground, you're also going to want to press down a little bit harder than you normally would because we want these spirals to show up really good whenever we put the paint on top. If you don't press down hard enough, then you might lose some of your puddles, okay? So I'm adding a little bit of pressure and I'm making some big spirals and I'm making some tinier ones to add variety to my artwork. Some are small, some are big, and that adds variety to your artwork. 
and I am filling up the entire bottom section. It's about where my raincoat stops and all the way down. I'm filling this entire bottom section with puddles. These beautiful spiral lines with my white oil pastel. I know it's very hard for you guys to see, but I have an entire section down here of just those beautiful spiral lines that I showed you just a second ago with pencil. And now we're gonna continue using our white oil pastel, and I'm gonna draw little lines on the rest of my background. I'm going back and forth, and I'm doing little dash lines. This is going to represent the rain in our picture. And I'm gonna do that in the entire rest of my background. I want this to be a beautiful rainy day scene. And what is a rainy day without rain? Well, it's not very rainy, is it? So we have to draw these little raindrops and it's hard for you to see. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just taking my oil pastel and I'm going up and down and making little dashes all in my background. You can put them wherever you want, um, but we want to spread them out just a little bit. And I'm gonna do that for the entire rest of my background. So the bottom part is just those spirals, and then the rest of my background is going to be these dash marks to represent the rain. If you want, maybe you want to draw a cloud up at the top to represent the sky. I draw a cloud by just doing a bumpy line all the way around in a circle. You see those bumps? That's a bumpy line to make a cloud shape. So you can put clouds at the top if you want to, but you don't have to. I think I like the clouds, so I'm gonna add one more over on this side and maybe a tiny cloud on this side. I'm still pressing down kind of hard because I want to be able to see this oil pastel once I paint on top of it. Okay, I just filled the rest of my background with some clouds at the top and I did those little dash marks in the rest of the background. So it's all filled up with the dash marks, the spiral lines, and the cloud shapes. And I know it's very hard for you to see right now, but after you finish, using your oil pastel and drawing the ground and the rain in the background, we are ready to start painting this. And I wanna show you what happens when you add the paint on top of this oil pastel. You're gonna see the oil pastel is going to resist or push that paint away. All right, so I'm going to grab some paint and I'm just dipping carefully my paintbrush into the paint. All right, if it's dripping, then you can just tell yourself drip, drip, wipe it on the lip because we don't want it to be dripping everywhere. That would make a big mess. Drip, drip, wipe it on the lip, and then we can start painting on top. And look, the more I spread this paint around, you can start seeing those spiral lines appearing. So my paintbrush is running out of paint right now, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna dip it in the paint again and drip drip wipe it on the lip because we don't want to drip it everywhere and I'm pretending like my paintbrush is like a ballerina she's standing on her tippy toes we don't want to squish the top of our paintbrush those are her tippy toes because then we might break them so be very careful when you're using your paintbrush so some of my lines are not showing up as well down here that means I didn't press down hard enough so Whenever you're drawing with your oil pastel, you really wanna make sure that you're pressing down hard enough so that when you paint on top, it will start to show up. But you can see that oil pastel is starting to push the paint away so we can see the spiral lines. And my paintbrush is just dancing across my paper like a beautiful ballerina. When I run out of paint, I'm gonna grab some more and I'm gonna try to paint a little bit around my umbrella. Even though that paint will resist it, we still wanna be careful, okay? We don't wanna get paint all over the hard work that we've already done. So we can just paint around it. All right, you can see those little dash marks are starting to show up. And I'm going back and forth with my paintbrush, making sure to keep her on her tippy toes. And I'm going towards the top now. 
This is a pretty big piece of paper, so we have to be very careful when we're painting. I am holding it with one hand so that it doesn't move around, and then I'm painting with the other hand. Oh, there's one of my clouds. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to fill in the rest of this background with this beautiful blue rainy day paint until I have no more white space left. And I'm just going around my umbrella. It's okay if you get a little paint on there. No worries at all. Okay, so I just have a little bit more space over here. So I'm gonna take my paint and oh, my paper's starting to move around. So just hold it down in place. And once you've painted the entire piece of paper, you are done. And your rainy day color wheel umbrella is all finished. I hope you guys had a lot of fun during this project. I can't wait to see how your final paintings turn out. I know they're going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.